Okay, we're going to look at classifying our six special quadrilaterals based on their symmetries. And there are two types of symmetries you want to consider. The line symmetry, where the mirror lines are, and the rotational symmetry, where we rotate the shape and try to fit it back into itself. So let's look at each shape individually. We're going to start off with our square. And with our square, there are that it does have line symmetry. So I'm going to put a tick here because it does have line symmetry. So let me try to identify where those are. So there's one down here and there. There's also in that direction and in that direction. So there are four mirror lines for a square. And each of those pairs of mirror lines, the diagonals and the, um, the horizontal and vertical, they meet at right angles. Now I think about rotating my square, I can see it can fit inside itself. It can fit inside itself once, twice, three times, four times. So it has rotational symmetry and the order of rotation is rotation symmetry four. Now I'm going to think about my rectangle. Again, my rectangle, I can fold it in half, um, so it does have line symmetry. Um, and it has two line symmetries. We've got one mirror line here and one mirror line here. There's a common mistake to suggest that there's a mirror line going diagonally through the rectangle. Um, I suggest taking a piece of A4 paper and trying to do that, and you see that's not possible. So there are only two mirror lines. And we can see if I pick it up and rotate it, it will fit inside itself. So it does have rotational symmetry. It's rotational symmetry once, halfway round, and once when it's rotated 360 degrees. So it's got rotational symmetry of order two. I now have my parallelogram. My parallelogram does not have line symmetry. So it doesn't have any line symmetry, zero. You might think I'm wrong, but again, I'd suggest cutting, going and having a go at it, but because there's no way I can fold this. If I try to fold along this line, this corner sticks out over here, and that one sticks out over there, and equally if I try to fold it down. Have a look, have a go yourself. In terms of rotational symmetry, a parallelogram will fit inside itself at 180 degrees and at 360 degrees, so it does have rotational symmetry of order two. Next I have my rhombus. My rhombus, remember, has um, four equal sides and opposite angles are equal. Well, because of that, I can split my rhombus in half in that direction and in half in that direction. So it does have line symmetry and has line symmetry of order two. In terms of rotational symmetry, it's um, a bit like a parallelogram in that I can pick it up and turn it 180 degrees and plop it back down again, and again 360 degrees. So it does have rotational symmetry, and it is of order two. Next I have my trapezium. Now when we're thinking about the line symmetries of a trapezium, we have a bit of a problem, because there are different types of trapezium. PCR. Now, this trapezium has no line symmetries at all. However, if I was to have an isosceles line um, trapezium, it would have one line of symmetry. Okay, so I'm going to say um, for isosceles, if I split this up here, for isosceles, yes, it's got one. Otherwise, no, it's got zero. Now a trapezium, if I try to t pick it up and turn it around, the only time it will fit back into itself is when it's back to the start, so it's going to be rotated 100, or 360 degrees. So it has order rotation symmetry one, okay, and not every shape has at least one. So we're going to say it does have order rotation symmetry, but it's only of order one, okay. And the last we have is a kite. Now a kite has one mirror line down the middle, so it does have line symmetry and has it once. And again, we have rotational symmetry of order one. Okay, so it's rotational symmetry of order one. 
So all shapes do have rotational symmetry, but when they only have order one, that means they only fit when it's turned 360 degrees. Now we will be expected to be able to identify what, these, what um, properties each of these shapes have, and hopefully this table will help us be able to do that. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.